Good morning. What's up? Welcome back to another one. Um, hold on, let me make it a little quieter in here. Just got done going to the post office. Picked up some birds. Just the top ones are mine. Uh, the rest of them are for their dads. They're for the shop. Whatever. However you all put it. But I'm going to go put these guys down. i got to be at work real quick. So uh, hopefully I'll have enough time to get these guys all into the tanks. But yeah, we'll see where today goes because I really don't know exactly what we're doing. But uh, this is the way I'm starting off today. Mm. It is a foggy one. Anyway, let's get these guys some water. But I got some Cayuga ducklings. Got 14 of these little guys. Those are pretty cool. I'm excited about that. Got a bunch of Easter eggers. More Easter eggers. Um, what happened to... I was supposed to get a, uh, a load of Sussex, but apparently I didn't get any. Oh well. Let's see here. Spec oh, they got put in here. I was supposed to get 25 Sussex also, but uh, apparently I only got a couple of them. Oh well. Whenever I get chicks, I like to dip everyone's beak in the water. That way they get a start of where it is right away and a little sip. Next, we have the ducklings. These guys can be an absolute mess. Because obviously they love water. Now, all of the chicks I ordered, um, all the Easter eggers, these are all pullets. Um, the ducks are straight run. What that means is all these are little girls, which should grow up to lay eggs. And all of these guys, they're just whatever hatched. They just reach into the tank, whatever came out that day. And they could be boys, girls, hopefully, you know, heavier on the female side for me because I'd like to raise a bunch of uh, those and have them around. I think I want to keep those in Welsh Harlequin. But uh, you never really know. They're just such a cool duck because they, they're completely black, but they have a really bright green sheen to them. That one, the sun hits. I have a pair of them right now, but I really wanted more. So I got a few more. Anyway, these are some of the ones that I still have from last week. Uh, actually, and some silkies from uh, the week before. But these guys here, I might fill up the water here in a second. Don't worry. Uh, I've got a bunch of speckled Sussex. Red on reds, barred rocks, a few silkies. And these are ones that I typically get in. And chicks have been a really, really, really hard thing to get this year. But uh, luckily with my connections at the hatchery, I can get some birds when they have extras and uh, get them to other people. So I have a bunch of extras that I haven't gotten rid of yet. Hey dudes. So this uh, goose right there is a dog attack survivor. He's got, you can see a little dark spot there. Got a big old nasty gash on the back of them, but uh, survived. Happy about that. So all of these I have set up on ink birds here. Big shout out to Jeff for turning me onto those. Well, while they're off, let me tell you what happens. So you set your tempo what it wants, what you want it to be. These are all in Celsius, and then they when they go within three degrees is what I have it set to. It kicks back on. So as the temp drops, it goes on. When it gets up to right temp, it shuts off. I really do like this system, but when it shuts off, that means my automatic turners don't run, so I just come in here every morning and evening, make sure that they at least get that. Hopefully they turn throughout the day also, but I didn't want to bank on it and make sure. I didn't want to bank on it, and I wanted to make sure that it actually happened. Anyway, that's something I do every morning here. Uh, make sure the incubator is running right. I did grab some tin to work on the, uh, the breeder pens over there. But I'm supposed to be at work here in about five minutes, and it's a 15 minute drive, so I gotta get there. And luckily, uh, my wife is off today, so she can do all the chores and stuff that you guys are gonna miss out on. But let's get the shop actually. I'll give you a little, little thing of what I'm gonna do there today. So we got another load of laying hens in. Get them shipped in like this. And uh, we're butchering some off today as well. Yeah, I can't show you this room. YouTube's not gonna like that. Tumbled. Now, I don't know 
if this will make it into it, but interesting chicken here today. Um, <laughs> it's like it's got two tails and uh, obviously has uh, two exits. Never seen anything like that before. Anyway, I thought it was interesting. Well, another one. Look at that. That is just nuts. Maybe this is really repulsive to you guys, but that is absolutely insane. Okay, well, chicken processing is done. Uh, just a little bit of information on that. We were doing what we call Buddha-style chickens. And the thing is, those chickens have the head on, feet on, they're a laying type of chicken. Um, so that's why they looked the way they did in any footage that made it into this. So, um, it's way different than what we normally sell through the shop. These go to the Asian markets in the big city. And uh, yeah, anyway, uh, it's lunchtime. And I am so excited. I got pulled pork with Carolina, slaw, uh, Carolina sauce and slaw, homemade potato salad, and beans. And I need to go get grain cart because I was out of pigeon feed. And so I'm gonna go get that, take that home. I got some uh, more supplies at the house with the tin there on the bed that we gotta take off of the take off the trailer. So a lot of stuff going on. So let's go get grain. I was gonna film putting it on, but one of the guys was nice enough to help me back up and everything, you know, make sure, let me know when I was back for enough and all that stuff, because I have an old truck, I don't have the camera for that. And I uh, didn't want to make it awkward by trying to film that, so got my grain, let's go take it home. There we go. Okay, so one thing about this grain cart, so this, you know, you just lift up on this and it drops grain. Uh, the goats have figured out that's what you do. So there's been several times to come back and there's just been a big old pile of grain because they dumped it all. So I've been having to put this old fishnet handle behind there, wedges it so these jerks can't uh, open it. So they're all doing good. Hey, bud. Hi. You go, goat. Mm -hmm. They would eat grain all day, every day, of course, uh, but they still have their bale of alfalfa there and they really don't need more than that. They still get a little bit, not a whole lot. That feel good. Anyway, goats are doing good, still fat, doing their thing. Baby's still, you know, getting bigger. You were supposed to be a big, tall goat. They said it was a Nubian. They didn't tell me it was a mini Nubian. So, anyway, there's the goats. Well, he survived. Uh, his buddy that looks just like him, not him. There were three of them. One of them got uh, murdered by the neighbor's dog. So, I was going to take all three of those actually. No, I was going to leave him because he's the blue one. I was going to take him and his buddy to the auction. Me with two chocolates and a blue. Um, yeah, these are the two chocolates, by the way. What? I have three chocolates? Okay, well, it looks like at least one of them needs to go to the auction. I'm gonna keep the guy with the white pink wing patches, another one, and a blue drake to run with all these uh, hen muscovies. You guys really can't see in there right now, but I'll get the screw gun and we'll get in there and we'll look. So, looks like they're all muscovy eggs. I'm leaving all the muscovies just to do their own thing, let them, you know, raise their own nest. If they're not Muscovy eggs, I try and take them. Ooh, looks like we might have a turkey egg down here. But uh, the Muscovies are really good at doing their job, so I'm gonna let them do them. Here's another one. That being said, I'm gonna be pretty much, I think I said something in one of the last videos also, that I'm gonna pretty much get out of turkeys. I only have this one bourbon red left, I'm gonna get rid of her. Gonna get rid of both the Royal Palm Toms. I think I'll just keep the slates and I might keep the bronzes. I got a pair of bronzes. I mean, they look cool, I like them, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep them or not, but I'm gonna keep the slates for a bit. I am picking up another Toulouse tonight and uh, the one hen here is nesting as well. So, hopefully that plays out well. You get this stuff spread out, but I'm gonna get rid of a bunch of stuff this next auction. Probably gonna end up buying some stuff too, but we'll see. I feel like I was yelling that entire time in there. Can you see her? This hen here? I have no idea how many eggs she's sitting on or how long she's been there. She's been there for at least two weeks, so she should be hatching shortly if she's going to. Um, I should put some duck eggs underneath her because they're all gonna be crossbred stuff that what she has. Uh, speaking of nests, there's a Muscovia trying to make a nest there. Um, let me show you another one real quick. 
So in this little room here, there's another Muscovy nest. Now there is a goose that comes in here and lays an egg every once in a while, so I keep checking it. But we're gonna let her do her thing as well. Can you guys see? She is also sitting. She only has a couple of eggs. I also should have put some other stuff with her. I don't know how she's planning on getting her chicks down, but uh, mama's sitting up here. Underneath these barrels, there's another Muscovy making a nest there. Then in here, you guys already know about Mama Deer sitting there on her nest. She's been, ever since the dog attack, I've been worried about it, but she's been pretty chill. And it had been a couple of geese using this, but uh, nothing today. These guys, just coming out of molt, I didn't expect them to start laying eggs um, for a little while here yet, but getting them all situated. They seem to really like this pen. I'm really, really happy with these breeding pens so far. This is the only one I have functional, but with that tin I got, I can't wait till it's all done. I'm so excited. I hope you guys are excited about the whole thing too because I'm pumped. And uh, if I can get it done before the auction in a week and a half, that could be really problematic because then I have lots of cage space and pens to keep everything separate and it's going to be a struggle, so. I might spend way more money than what I wanted to. <laughs> Got my tin backed up here. I'm just gonna go ahead, lay it down here. That way I have easy access to it when I need it. <sighs> yep. Welcome to the play-by-play -play of what Jordan did on Wednesday. So, uh, yeah, I'll pick this up when I get that done. Well, just for kicks and giggles, I went and threw a piece of tin in there. That way, uh, if I wanted to, you know, this would be secure. If I felt like putting something in here, which I might move uh, them over here and put something there. I don't know. But go, my tin moved off. Broke a nice little sweat, you know, because for once it's actually still today. Would be the perfect day for actually working at home if uh, I didn't have to go back to the shop, but I do. So yeah, this is gonna have to wait. But real quick, show you Cal what I'm thinking because you know, progress will be who knows how it'll go. Thought about tin in the back. This, uh, wire up top, you know, in front here. I'm not sure if I'll just maybe put tin on the entire top. I don't know. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Let some sun through, keep part of the back protected. I think I'm gonna tin the whole back side though. For some reason that just makes sense to me, uh, mainly because uh, of winter and stuff like that. It'd be a little bit more of a wind block. I mean, obviously the barn's there to protect it from the north wind, but it just seems more secure. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll just, maybe I should just put the whole, you know, back with the wire like I was going to and just put tin on top for now. Seems like overkill. I don't know. Because I wouldn't mind returning these panels because they're, you know, like 110 bucks a piece and I wouldn't mind uh, putting that towards birds instead of more fencing. But I want to make it secure and make it good. So, anyway, enough screwing around. I got the stuff pretty much unloaded that I needed to get unloaded. Let's go take a look at uh, the new birds that I got which you guys have already seen, you know, in the thumbnail and stuff, but I'm excited to, I am excited to show you them. So let's go do it. Well, the wife is using a screw gun, so we'll get in there in a minute. Let's go check on the pigeons. Now, the other day, the loft door got left open. And so a bunch of these birds were out cruising around. I think most all of them came back in here and we shut up during the night. So I'm hoping everything's all good, but uh, there's not a whole lot of nesting going on, uh, except for back here. Well, back in there, there's a baby, if you can call them a baby. Uh, there's also a couple new ones that were back in there that have grown up. So, nothing much to show you. Like, he's a new one. He's a babyish one on the end there. He's a cool bird, but yeah. Anyway, Modinas are still just hanging out. I wish they would get to it and start breeding. But, uh, Mama Sarama down here. I didn't mean for you to freak out, but uh, she is setting on eggs. I'm really, 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 really tempted to take her eggs and put them underneath pigeons and let the pigeons hatch them and then take them away when they do hatch. There's still time. Obviously there's still time. If you guys want to see that happen, drop me a comment. Um, I know I haven't read comments and I'm not gonna promise because I know how life gets crazy. But if you guys want to see that, drop a comment and I will try and uh, make it happen if you guys want to see that. Well, let's go look at that side real quick. Guys, 
I mean, really. Who drops an egg in the middle of the feet? I don't know what you guys are thinking, but uh, whatever. Anyway, let's start over here. Now, these guys, definitely, I don't even think these guys had hatched last time I was up here with you guys. But uh, <laughs> they're a few days old. Well, actually, they're getting closer to a week, week and a half, but you know, good looking chicks. Definitely the bigger one there. Haven't really seen what color they're gonna be yet, but I'm guessing dark just by you know looking at the, the color of the the skin there. Could have a could have a bunch of white, I don't know. I'm excited. There's also a nest down there. This one's failed like three times already. I'm not sure why they failed three times, but uh, they keep making nests there. It keeps getting destroyed. I don't know if it's other pigeons or if it's a rat, mice, snakes, I don't know. But keeps failing, they keep trying again. Over here, these guys. These guys hatched like right after one of the last videos up here. And they are getting big first. Yeah, I'm excited about them. The other one has a lot more white if I remember right. Come here. Like, I shouldn't say he has more white. He's got a white bill and so I'm guessing like he's gonna have white flights there for sure. Both sides, white on the back. I'm excited to see what this one turns out as, but you can go back home now, bud. Now this mama, I don't actually know what she has, if there's still eggs or if they've hatched yet. But uh, I'm not gonna chase her off to find out. Every time I come up, she's still sitting there. So I'm assuming it's still eggs. Now these guys are the older ones yet. Just pretty standard looking birds. Pretty sure they're just gonna be blues or blue bars or blue checks. But they're getting big, they're doing good. And then down here, you got, hey buds. Now, I didn't realize these guys had nested down there until after last video. But, I mean, look how cool that is. He's an absolute unit of a bird, too. Chunk in the hand, I'm excited to see you know, how he matures out. But his brother, his little brother was a little bit more of a pain to catch. Not quite the white head, he's got a little white on his breast there and the flights, but uh, he's definitely the less unique one of the two, but still a cool bird though. But anyway, that does it for the pigeons. Um, hopefully my wife's done with the screw gun now and we can get to the birds that you guys actually came to see. I'll try and keep from freaking them out too much. But uh, we got two pair of wood ducks and a mandarin. Absolutely gorgeous birds. Dude, I just want to show people how pretty you are. Obviously full wing. Um, yeah, I got the paperwork for them. Don't worry about it. I'm so excited about them though. Getting nest boxes built. Um, I'm not planning on keeping them in here. I'm getting another spot made for them. But uh, I. They came up for sale, I snagged them up, and I'm working on a better better spot for them. But they got plenty of room to fly actually from back to back, you know, side to side, whatever. And they just don't have as much access to outside as I like them to have. But at least they are, you know, plenty of space and out of the weather. So, hey pretty girl. Anyway, I'm super excited about them. I'm gonna try and catch a drake real quick. We'll take a look at them and then I will let them go back to being them. So I'm doing this in here because I don't want them to escape. But here is one of the drake woodies. He's so pretty. Got that cool chestnut sparkled chest there. Just an absolute gorgeous dirt. Gorgeous bird. I wish he was all proud with his head right now, but you know, very nervous bird. Oh, he's so cool. Anyway, that's him. Let me show you the next one. All right. Now this guy, basically an Asian wood duck. Uh, yeah, this is my mandarin drake. I'm planning on getting a hen, um, but right now I just have a drake. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about these. Obviously very similar to a wood duck, but look at, I mean, just, it is just such a cool bird. Just cool. But, uh, yeah. 
And he's got this wild, wild feather there. Now the one on the other side I happened to pull out when I was handling him when I got him here. But this feather, it it's just so unique. I love that. I love the way their head looks. Just an absolutely gorgeous bird. Anyway, let me get these guys put back away and uh, we'll close out this video. All right, so uh, we are on our way to go do some swapping real quick. We've got eight of the Sussex in there. Sorry about the shoddy camera work I'm trying to drive at the same time. What are we gonna go get? Pieces. Pieces, goosin, gooses, is, you know, some high quality birds. Uh, anyway, probably won't film the interaction a whole lot. It, it's awkward to put people you don't know on camera. Uh, so once we get the swap done and the birds going, we'll show you what we ended up with. So, got the swap done. Well, let's go take them home and see what happens. All right, so the lady that I got them from said that big boy here is a Toulouse African cross and is super friendly, like thinks he's a dog. So, but uh, not so friendly with chickens. She, <laughs> this guy was killing her chickens, so that's why she got rid of them. So I'm gonna put this guy out in the general population, you know, all these guys here, and then we're gonna put the hen with the other Toulouse that I have. Right, Peanut? Is he loud? All right. Here, you need, you need to stay in there though. You're just gonna make yourself a home, dude? Perfect. Look at that. King of the world, bud. Well, let's go see how he uh, interacts with his friends real quick. Oh. Hold on, not too fast. Huh? The Chinese is just posturing like crazy. Hanging out with everybody. All right, we got a little combat right away. Chill out, bros. Don't be a jerk. I'm gonna have to go break this up real quick, so uh, I'll be back. Now that I saved you, you're gonna, you're gonna follow me out? Yeah, and he's like, protect me, dude. That, that Emden is mean. Yeah, all right. You can follow me out. We gotta grab your girlfriend anyway. Ah, <laughs> uh, we gotta come up with a name for him too. He's just following you. He thinks he thinks we're all buds, okay? Dude, you're just gonna get your butt kicked again. Ah, right, bro. All right, there you go. Uh, there's nobody that way. I want to see how you interact with everybody. So, could you? Here, I'll just jump you over. There you go. Gonna be cool. I know there's a lot of craziness going on. This one is not supposed to be quite as fun. She's pretty wild, but uh, let's see what uh, you guys go right through. Awesome. That's what I like to see. Well, guys, uh, I'm going to throw in some of the podcast stuff, hopefully here right before. If you guys would you know, like to help me out, support the channel, um, hitting, up on, hitting us up on Patreon is a great way to do that. It's five bucks a month. It's really not that much. Um, even if you don't listen to the podcast at all, it would really help me out. If you guys just want to hang out here on YouTube, hit the like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. That also helps me out a bunch. So that's pretty much my Wednesday. And uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll figure out how everything else is going in the future. And uh, hope you guys enjoy the farm content. I'm enjoying getting back into the swing of things. Hunting season is fun, but it's just way more stressful because it's just... There's a lot of pressure to, you know, make things happen. So I'm stoked to get back into this stuff. If you guys like it, thumbs up, comment, like, subscribe, you know, all that stuff that we say. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. I am broken record here. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully we see you on the next one. I think that there's a huge push towards people being curious about the rural living thing. Yeah. Um, then especially when COVID hit and all that stuff supermarkets ran out of things it was hard to get especially if you're in the bigger city center areas i mean there for a while you couldn't buy meat you right. could buy only a certain amount of it everything was out and then the last couple years there's always seemed to be a bird flu or something like that hitting a huge hen house and there's been a shortage on eggs or eggs have gone up to five six eight ten bucks a dozen i mean stupid prices and people are like i'm gonna get a couple chickens 
you know, if you get four or five good hens, you're gonna have more eggs than what you know what to do with anyway. Right. And I think there's a lot of people that are just wanting to not only be a little bit more self-sufficient on some things, but also I think there is a drive to people or for people to want to know where their food is coming from also. Right. So what would you say like the average price for a chick is now?